Hi guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at exactly what is the state of the UK economy. Now, not from an academic level, but from a basic man on the street level. Not from a Brexit level, not from a Remain level. Just the bare facts. Right, let's just set the scene here for a minute. The first part is to identify who is telling the truth, who is exaggerating in order to support their agenda, and who is lying. So establishing who is telling the truth is actually not as easy as one might think. In other words, we're not going to be blinded by the science of statistics because as Benjamin Disraeli, one of the founders, may I remind you, of the Conservative Party, famously said, there are three kinds of lies. There are lies, there are damned lies, and then there's statistics. And the same is true today as it was when he first coined that phrase. You see, even for me, I don't know about you guys, but it's next to impossible to choose who to believe, let alone what to believe, when it comes to the press releases about how well the economy is growing. But not as much as we would like, or that inflation is above expectations, but it's transient and will come back on target during the middle of next year. We've all heard the stories. Now, we've also heard how the rising cost of energy is having effects across the globe and that the UK is not alone in our struggles to contain these serious repercussions. And I say to this, oh yeah, really? So let's go. Good Lord, didn't anybody here subscribe? Take for instance, Rishi Sunak's own department, his own department now, namely the Office for Budget Responsibility, which is chaired by Richard Hughes. And let's not forget for one single second that the budget that Rishi Sunak announced is based on their findings. Now his views don't taint it to be fair with the reality that his career is very much at the mercy of his Lord and Master, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, should, in my honest opinion, be listened to, though arguably with some caution, I agreed. And I say he should be listened to because A, he, can conducted, he conducted a little viewed webinar on Wednesday the 27th of October. The link to the video, by the way, is in the description. And really did blow the lid off, quite frankly, because either this guy is looking to get fired or he's genuinely concerned with the fallout of Brexit. Or B, he's a total liar. But as he had a number of other speakers on the same live stream with him, I'm gonna go with option A. However, in the video he did discuss inflationary pressures and his views differ slightly from that of the newly appointed chief economist of the Bank of England, whom we discussed earlier, and Mr. Hugh Pill. Now, Despite the variance in their forecasts, both have agreed that inflation will hit above 4% quite soon. And the pressure of a northerly trajectory is far, far greater than the chances we could legitimately expect to change the trajectory to a southerly direction. Okay? That being said, the startling comment by, let's remember here, one of Rishi Sunak's top people about Brexit simply must be taken into account. And it went like this. Brexit has, is, and will continue to have a greater negative effect than even COVID. Now, I'd like you to pause the video or pause your brain and think about that for a minute. You see, because during COVID, almost every single business in the UK was closed for a period of 10 weeks from March 2020 to March 2021. So that means 20% of the entire economy was shut down. Now, don't get me wrong here. I think the government had no choice but to take the action that it did, despite the fact that they did too little and it was too late. It needed to be done. So when a guy from Rishi Sunak's own department says, Houston, we have a problem, you know that this can no longer be swept under the carpet. When experts in the field, such as Michael Martin, a private client manager at Seven Investment Management, who's a regular contributor to the FT, claims, and I'm quoting him here, quoting, 
that Sunak's comment that a more than 4% inflation should be expected is extremely alarming because it's usually much higher than those announced. Okay? He added that at an official 2% rate, many of his clients were already running at 6 to 7%. So this, for him and for his clients, is the biggest concern. So, I really do think we should look at that figure, this 4% figure. And let's look at it this way. One, Unilever have already increased their prices by 5% and expect further increases, something we covered in an earlier video. Two, we know that the cost of heating has increased and that we also expect further increases as the UK doesn't, doesn't even have a bucket of storage anywhere and is now royally screwed. Okay, three, we know that the price of the pumps is the highest in many people's living memories. Four, we know also from the construction industry that the cost of raw materials has risen in excess of 50% and I include cement, brick, timber, steel. Five, we know that the, dis dis the distribution costs have increased by about 30% according to industry experts and they know what they're talking about because it's already occurred. Four, we have seen massive delays in Folkestone. Containers are sitting on the docks for up to a month because we don't have enough drivers, which is causing a tailback of ships and therefore even higher costs because they want to cover that capital expenditure, which are already, by the way, at a level we have ever witnessed before. Five, this can all be topped off by witnessing the farming industry leaving food rotting in the ground because it no longer has access to cheaper labor. Now, we, you also know, and if you don't know, let me help you out, that those vegetables are ready to be picked next year. For, for those ve vegetables to be picked next year, the farmer will have to make the decision now as to whether or not he starts planting seeds this month and take the risk that either he can't harvest it next year or that his cost will be too high to compete with imported goods. In summary, you can see clearly that the chances of inflation being felt by the guy on the street at anything less than 7% is basically zero, with an average expected salary rise of 3% in all government departments. Now you may think I'm exaggerating here. Well, I'm not. A number of months ago, we discussed a video about the choice being made by the turkey farmers. In that video, we asked a simple question that went a bit like this. If you were the farmer, would you invest in the cost of growing turkeys that run the risk of not being able to be processed for the Christmas market because of labor shortages? We came to the conclusion, as you may remember at the time, that they wouldn't. And guess what? We were right. And now we've learned that the UK supermarkets have booked their turkeys for the Christmas market from Eastern Europe. In short, there is a litany of events that all add up to the most difficult time for the voters of the UK. Food banks are the only industry in the UK that are to expand, and they are expanding at a rate of knots. It really is that simple. And to those of you out there who voted for this fiasco, but during the referendum and, and both in the referendum and the general election, all we can say is, Please help us make things right and get on to your MPs and ask them one simple question. Why they lied to you about all the benefits of Brexit when all the experts said they were talking rubbish? That's what's the question. That's the question that needs to be asked those um, MPs, especially in the marginal constituencies. Thanks a lot, guys. See you on the flip side. Keep safe. Enjoy your weekend and basically keep safe. Take care. Bye-bye.